Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I am Samir Mehta, your moderator. This is session number 59 and we have another exciting, challenging CTO of the LAD for you. Let me take you straight to the cardiovascular laboratory where Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney are already scrubbed in. Samin, good morning to you. All right, good morning and uh, welcome to all our global viewers uh, from the cath lab and with my staff uh, and the fellows here. We'll start uh, with this case, uh, as you mentioned. Samin, a big, uh, big buzz uh, for uh, both of you. A lot of congratulations coming uh, regarding uh, the very nice four live cases which you did at the I2 ACC summit. Yeah, I mean, we are really thankful to uh, ACCI2 uh, organizers that uh, they gave us a chance and it was tremendous uh, for us as an institution to represent both days for first day 90 minutes uh, live and uh, second day which is Saturday and second day uh, 75 minutes and we did total four cases and uh, clearly we got a very good feedback from the ACC staff uh, because of the participant or viewers there which is more than 1000 on each day uh, it is now i requested them that since our ccc live uh, web uh, webcast is all teaching i wanted to post those cases on our ccc live and to our good surprise or pleasant surprise i acc i2 gave us a permission for educational purposes so all four cases are posted live now cases were the first day, the case was an 87 year old patient with uh, severe aortic stenosis and extensive CAD, calcific left main, LAD, circumflex, RCA. Declined surgery, rightly so, at 87, uh, COPD also. So, that case we did a balloon aortic valvuloplasty followed by orbital atherectomy of the left main and LAD, PPC of the diagonal, and put two stents uh, with the stent crossover technique. Uh, the second patient, was a patient with the osteo left main with the sorry distal left main 80% uh, calcific lesion with the ejection fraction of 20% who had a primary PCI of the RCA so that case we did impella assisted rotablation followed by the cutting balloon and uh, stent in the bare metal stent in the left main of 4.5 uh, millimeter size the next day actually i flew uh, back to washington and i moderated the session which uh, uh, dr keeney and uh, dr dangas did that case was the peri patient with the ct of the mid lad and also has a total uh, significant disease of the iliac so they did a pta first and then uh, anu did the recanalization of the total occluded uh, mid lad cto the fourth case was a real highlight, was a very uh, tortuous shepherd crook calcific right coronary with a distal lesion, about 80-90% calcium. There was a lot of debate whether that patient should get a rotablation or what. And uh, masterfully, skillfully, Anu demonstrated the use of guideliner using two wires through the six French guideliner and ability to deliver a stent in that shepherd crook. Uh, complex calcific right coronary artery and those were the four cases and entire those cases with the discussion moderation are available on our CCC live uh, cases website and uh, people anybody can go and uh, take the advantage of that a tremendous educational opportunity which we received by ACC this year. Look, I think they have a complete repertoire of uh, everything you could need as an interventional cardiologist, uh, left mains, calcifications, uh, guideliners, rotablator, orbital atherectomy. Fantastic, Samin, congratulations. Uh, your meeting is also coming up in uh, two weeks' time. That's it. We are all getting geared for ready. Uh, same focus would be on the coronary cases uh, on the complex uh, calcific bifurcation and CTOs uh, and uh, we have a lot of cases lined up and of course uh, we do a, a Sunday before the meeting uh, go through all the cases and select them appropriately from the teaching educational point of view uh, along with patients with LV dysfunction and the second day uh, which will be on 13th combination of coronary intervention plus the percutaneous uh, valve replacement tower and we expect to do four uh, tower cases three core valve and one edward sapien and maybe uh, could be a melody pulmonic valve also but the uh, focus would be same first day is strictly complex coronary emphasis on coronary the techniques and the second day uh, more on the structural heart disease because that's where the future is nowadays registration is still open 
it is still open and uh, tremendous and actually we we uh, highlighted uh, the um, the the interventional board review the basically whether it's endovascular board review or the interventional our board review we actually had a capacity of 50 for us and 70 for endovascular and all have been filled so we are trying to increase the capacity so this has been a tremendous uh, because of the speakers we selected the topics we have selected it has it i expect it to be a, a very good and fruitful meeting excellent and ricardo just pass me the numbers uh, is it correct uh, we are now being watched in 122 countries by 7400 cardiologists that's it that's a great segue to start for another case today uh, with the uh, we can start with the support uh, uh, this uh, supported by abbott vascular boston scientific and vascular solution this is our disclosure same no change and this is a uh, case number 59 so that this is just one month short of our five years in a row uh, we have a various affiliations right from the beginning and uh, but ccc live has its own standalone um, the web uh, cases and we all are archived this case is a 62 year old male who presented last year last month beginning with the crescendo angina after positive stress test and has a both led as well as the circumflex ischemia had an intervention of the circumflex and now after optimal medical therapy has brought back for the led diagonal intervention which we go individually uh, anu will show us the angiogram this case has a bifurcation as well as total occlusion and uh, syntax score was 29 non-diabetic two vessel disease with a minimal lb refuse dysfunction surgery. uh refuse surgery but it's okay to do a pci in these kind of cases and appropriateness uh, the patient has class 2 angina on maximum medical therapy uh, with the uh, one vessel disease will make it uh, appropriate now with that case note uh, i'll ask anu to show the um, angiogram so this is uh, his lv function which is normal he had a normal edp and uh, this is his right coronary artery which you could see um, you know moderate size uh, vessel but uh, important is that uh, from mid to distal there is significant disease and it's like a early bifurcation pda acute marginal actually becomes pda you do not see any left sided uh, collaterals that is going to the lad and this is what we have uh, the left side where you probably a codominant um, uh, uh, circumflex but he had significant disease of that uh, om2 which was uh, stented last time and here we are for the lad which you start seeing it's a complex anatomy in the sense um use led and diagonal almost equal size at the origin and uh, it's very difficult to see exactly where is the opening of i mean the beginning of this uh, led cto and it's a delayed filling delayed filling and you don't have anything that fills from the right side well i i bet you once you open it the vessel is going to be much larger than what it uh, appears now uh, samin and uh, anu any considerations towards uh, uh, quickly first fixing the right uh, also um I well i mean that's uh, actually you know by correct definition um, uh, that this case should have been a uh, co-dominant now because of the syntax uh, uh, the reclassification that there is a right dominance or left dominance so we call it a right dominance <coughs> but uh, there is a diffuse disease of the distal rca uh severe you know it is a reasonable to fix it at some point uh, but only question was that this was you, you know sometimes if not sometimes often our therapy is guided by if patient has a non-vagio testing this patient has a clearly apical led ischemia moderate and mild lateral ischemia which i think it was from the om2 om3 which has been fixed and uh, now the led but uh, yes angiographically rca has a lot of disease and could be uh, the i mean could be suitable just gives you a little more room to work with the ct of the led with the right open but uh, look uh, this is a wonderful case to demonstrate uh, uh, any other views anu could yeah, have been so taken to is, demonstrate I think it the same uh, we have seen uh, rao caudal we could not see the you know the entry site for the cto ap cranial if you see uh, led originates and then looks like it becomes a major diagonal um, and you just is somewhere hidden i think in the caudal view is the only place where you can see the so called um, if you see here not worthwhile to do a bilateral cannulation no 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 
if you see i'm just going to go back a little bit so if you when you see the led that originates whatever that is coming off is just becoming a dag and what looks like become the dag then becomes a led and there is a little gap exactly yeah. at 12 o'clock position 11 30 to 12 and that is the short area of cto except that you don't have the um the funnel shape uh, of the led so, so that, likely that's this is the only view that will be able to actually wire it and then um, get in, uh, to the CTO. So, I mean, clearly, technically a difficult case with the, not the 95% success rate anticipated. So, did you even mention to the patient that uh, there may be considerations even of uh, other uh, modalities including surgery if you are not able to open? He actually was referred for surgery and he declined. The cat was done in outside hospital, uh, referred for surgery, declined. He has come to Mount Sinai for PCI. Excellent. But, but, uh, but I think that's a yeah. point uh, because the near normal LV now, at that time he has a mild anterior wall hypo that led to EF of 55%. But in this case, if uh, need to be OM has been taken care, uh, if the diagonal, we put one stent in the diagonal and let patient go for minimally invasive. Uh, Lima to LED if we are unsuccessful because it will be a large LED. Young person, uh, no, you know, good exercise tolerance so that uh, nothing wrong if we are unsuccessful to put him onto the LA, Lima to LED as a hybrid approach which we don't do much but I think it will be, a, this could be the case for minimal invasive uh, mid cab or MICAS the various names we use for that. Okay. What are you reviewing with us, Samin, okay. today? So we start with uh, the two points. Uh, one, uh, actually recently presented the expert CTO, Anu presented in uh, uh, ACC about uh, the major trial which was uh, completed, CTO trial done in, uh, in, New, in United States. Uh, and then I'll just give some data on the left main revascularization. And now expert CTO just want to give you where we are. The any, we have many multi-center registry which have been published. Initial success rate used to be about 68. This was a publication of 2011. Then subsequent 2013 brought the success rate to about 80% with a complication rate of less than 0.5%. Uh, so clearly our success rate has increased. Now continues uh, in 2011-2012 data published uh, last year. Now question is what is in this current uh, contemporary practice with the different wires, different balloons and so and that is what the uh, basis for the expert CTO trial design uh, which has three components and Anu will take us through this presentation which she made uh, before doing the case on Saturday. She did a presentation that morning in Washington, took the shuttle, come back, came back and we did our live relay at 12.30. Yeah. So if you see the expert CTO trial design was a prospective multi-center, uh, was a single, single arm, not a uh, you know, dual arm uh, study design. What three different devices that were uh, studied, if you see, was the guide wire. The guide wire uh, that was studied was a high torque uh, pilot as well as a progress family. So the, there are various progress wires and this was tested in the initial 138 patients. The other the thing that they tested was the mini track balloon which uh, went almost one, uh, up to 1.26 millimeter uh, size balloon and they were tested in the first 88 patients and the stent which was uh, the Zions Prime which was uh, 2.25 various length uh, stents and 250, to, uh, 250 patients. 20 sites were selected in the uh, United States. And we were the lead enroller. Yeah. Um, first to complete the first uh, 50 patients, uh, 250 patients were enrolled but after various uh, exclusion criteria to one year intention to treat there were about 209 patients and they had a good follow up up to 97%. Important in inclusion criteria was the same, had to be native vessel more than 3 months and a timid uh, 0 to 1 flow was allowed and exclusion criteria was MI within 72 hours and uh, need for any kind of atherectomy and there was no restriction for the type of uh, you know what kind of a CTO uh, anti-grade retrograde or combined so this was initially presented in the sky uh, what was the primary uh, endpoint where you see the guide wire reaching the distal lumen in the absence of in hospital maze and the definition for maze they had uh, two criteria for uh, which was the arc MI 
अदरवाइज दे हैड वॉट इज कॉल्ड एस अ प्रोटोकॉल एम आई आर्क एम आई वॉज टिपिकल सी के एम बी और ट्रोपोनिन ग्रेटर देन थ्री टाइम्स प्रोटोकॉल एम आई वॉज सी के मोर देन टू टाइम्स इन द एबजेंस ऑफ एनी क्यू वेव एम आई क्यू वेव ऑन द ई के जी लिटल डिफरेंट डेफिनेशन बट इफ यू सी द गाइड वायर रीचिंग डिजिटल लूमेन वॉज नाइन्टी परसेंट एटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट एंड दे कंपेर्ड इट विद परफॉर्मेंस गोल एंड वॉट वॉज परफॉर्मेंस गोल दैट दे टुक सिक्स हिस्टोरिकल सी टी ओ ट्रायल एंड कंबाइंड द सक्सेस रेट एंड दैट इज वॉट दे गॉट वॉज सिक्सटी टू परसेंट दैर सो दैट वॉज कंपेर्ड टू दैट वॉज सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस ऑफ एबल टू क्रॉस द सी टी ओ विद द वायर एंड देन द सेम थिंग विद द बलून सक्सेसफुल बलून डिलीवरी विद दिस न्यू मिनी ट्रैक बलून वॉज अगेन Uh, about uh, 97 percent with of balloon del uh, delivery uh, in these cases, and if you see the baseline characteristics, no difference. The usual uh, complex uh, patient population, um, and the important was uh, RCA and LED were the most of the vessels that were uh, CTO. Other important thing was the lesion length. If you take lesion length, were uh, more than 30 millimeter lesion length, but uh, the uh, occlusion length based on the QCA was about only. 14 uh, mm or so and other important thing was the number of stent that were used 38 mm stent was allowed so it was about 1.9 giving a stent length of uh, above 50 mm in this uh, uh, you know population and uh, other thing is clinically significant perforation was zero uh, in this entire trial that's a great thing then coming to the total overall uh, you know success rate again same arc mi if you see that you were able to uh, distally uh, you know uh, the the wire is in the distal lumen able to deliver the balloon and in the absence of um, in the stent delivery and absence of mi if you see the definition for as per the definition your success rate was again 90% uh, from arc mi was sl slightly higher per protocol and various techniques whether it was anti grade retrograde and uh, you know star uh, kissing knuckle all kind of uh, techniques or so many time the combined technique were also used um, in this uh, trial and this is uh, the ckmb elevation during the trial where if you see majority of them were between 3 to 5 times again very little was about only 5.4% and this is the final one year clinical outcome and if you take their 1.9% death but important is clinical tlr which was 6.3 significant low, lower than any other cto registry that has been published in the literature and stent thrombosis again was very low 1.4 for knowing that it's done in the cto patient very long stent length and whatever harm you know the, the dapt this stent thrombosis happened on uh, dapt therapy so just to conclude that compared to any of the historical data of the cto uh, this prospective um, you know non randomized trial first time showed that the procedural success of of 90% was achieved with this um, uh, guide wire uh, and important also that uh, newer balloon we were able to demonstrate the deliverability and lesion crossing with uh, because of the low profile with this um, balloon and uh, the same the zions es uh, stent uh, successfully delivered and a very low tlr at uh, one year and very low stent thrombosis compared to whatever has been uh, published so taking uh, everything into account in this um, cto uh, in a, a complex uh, patient population as well as uh, this complex lesion subset when done by uh, i would say Table. expert Table. people Table. uh the success rate has gone up to 90% which is a, a very good or actually um important uh, finding that uh, this trial has uh, we were able to see the this uh, you know people should be now able to uh, get their specialty in uh, doing the cto's and i think uh, that's a good thing for uh, uh, to compare with japan so that now you know people don't need to go to japan the us uh, uh, operators have become very skillful uh, and uh, 90 plus percent success rate taken all together and this is what the what we quote the patient now used to be 70 75 80 now clearly the 90 plus percent of the time cto you attempt you will succeed and this actually doesn't include many of them when you bring them second time 
but uh, clearly this is a, a great study to really um, uplift the level of comfort and the success in the CTO arena. So, I mean the statement which you made about uh, CTO successes comparable in Japan and the US, uh, I remember almost two years ago when uh, Bill Lombardi and Craig Thompson were there, that was uh, some of our uh, main themes that uh, success rates in the US are now very high. Uh, anu, a quick question, uh, I'm sure the manuscript is uh, being prepared uh, for a peer review journal also? Yes. And uh, the last part is, uh, how? what was the use of the guideliner in the study? Uh, in this uh, trial, actually, guideliner was not used. Actually, so once we you did a subs uh, subset analysis, which is already published uh, uh, with the use of guideliner in CTO. Right. The only reason I mentioned is that would be a further tool in your uh, your devices, which would further even increase the success rates. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Now you get ready, uh, and you start the case. Uh, once we and while I finish uh, my second part uh, of uh, just to give update in the left main revascularization and particularly what has been come in the literature now uh, is that there is a which we knew anyway that there is a differential effect of a type of revascularization PCI or cabbage based on the where the lesion location we all know that the distal bifurcation lesion which occurs in two third of cases had a bad prognosis means in terms of higher event rate but the ostium and body shaft lesions which occur in about one third of the cases have a different prognosis and reports have been that they do the quite benign and now i'll show you the the latest data of the long term follow up now also in the syntax trial uh, remember about 700 plus cases of the 1800 had a <coughs> the left main and now we have the five year follow up data published both of the multi vessel as well as the left main cohort uh, in these patients and based on the syntax score if you see a left main disease syntax score of 22 23 to 32 and uh, whether you have three vessel disease you can see in the left main the curves of the cabbage and pci like identical you know superimposed but once you go to the multi vessel disease there is a difference even in the low syntax score patient very important although it doesn't make a statistical Some significance in less than 22 but there is a gradient even in the low syntax score patient with the multi vessel disease while for the left main only it gets into the high syntax tertiary the 33 and above the clearly that uh, cabbage was superior uh, compared to pci which is the red bar, uh, cabbage being the blue bar. So, so clearly that there is a gradient uh, of uh, MACI in patients with left main and three vessel, which is more uh, in the multi vessel disease rather than in the left main disease. Then the, the data on the delta registry, these are 12 centers, all cases, whether it went for cabbage or uh, PCI, uh, this was a large number of patients, about 3,000. Uh, the PCI cabbage published two few years ago in overall it showed that uh, two-thirds were the distal left main and others were proximal and shaft lesion that there is clearly um, the trend in favoring of not trend uh, that uh, incidence in favoring cabbage compared to the PCI this is not a randomized but was the registry but then they just pre presented last month the subset of patients with the ostium and shaft lesions and from the delta registry and these were derived from the uh, the overall group of 2800 patient pci in seven uh, the over osteal shaft lesion were in 1118 the said 374 underwent cabbage and 744 underwent pci and they showed the data of the in hospital outcome which we know a little higher mi rate in the cabbage group but more importantly at five year follow-up in these patients uh, clearly you can see here the death MI, CV identical, clearly higher TVR, even in the austral and mid shaft, they found a higher TVR with a PCI group compared to cabbage and that led to a non-statistical trend in favor of the cabbage. So that just to say, in the past we used to say austral and shaft lesion uh, kind of uh, normal or similar to cabbage, not true, there is clearly a some difference and part of that difference could be driven because of it was driven by the concomitant other vessel disease if you take a isolated revascularization of the ostium or the shaft they were identical but it was because all these cases do have other vessel disease also and that really drove uh, the tbr and you can see now once you get the propensity match the based on the extent of CAD and so you can see the curves are identical with a no difference in p-value so that basically speaks for 
that if you have appropriately selected identical case group of the, the osteal and shaft left main disease whether they go for cabbage or pci the outcomes were identical at a three to five years time period now then the first generation was the second generation we all know second generations are newer generation stands are better than the first generation and then we have now <coughs> within the second generation comparison of the joterolimus versus everolimus zines versus the uh, endeavor or resolute and you can see here that there is no difference uh, in death, MI, TLR or maize, there is a si slight difference in terms of stent thrombosis uh, as you've shown here uh, about 0.9 versus 0.6 percent. But angiographically again the, the everlumus eluting stent have a trended towards lower angiographic restenosis compared to ZES but clinical endpoints of death, MI, TLR uh, were identical with slight difference in stent thrombosis. Now this leads to that our guidelines of the left main revascularization basically that uh, we know that patient with isolated left main stenosis and this is uh, clearly from the delta registry showing that outcomes match population identical third to five uh, this is in the first generation of the DES uh, really leads to in my opinion that isolated you have osteal lesion mid shaft lesion with a low syntax score probably it should be appropriate to do the PCI it should no longer be you. And of course, definitely not the eye, um, which is our, our guidelines. Okay. Now, one very interesting and which we all knew, the Excel trial, which uh, one uh, with the plan to compare the cabbage versus Zion stent in patient with the multi, That's with the left five. main with uh, with our, without additional vessel disease, but syntax score of 32 or less, supposed to plan with a 2600 randomized patient, and basically found uh, the trial concluded. Uh, stop enrollment actually after 1800 cases and of course in the follow-up phase now and uh, hopefully we'll get some answer now question was that why it was uh, stopped uh, not reached the target of 2600 it's a lot of debate whether it's a financial issues or midterm analysis definitely showed no difference in two uh, strategy but clearly the minimum endpoint were the death mi and the cva at uh, three years just like the freedom endpoint so with that note uh, now we are going to uh, Go, uh, going to go here, uh, uh, no, uh, we go to the live, uh, show us what we have done. You want to keep it in this view? You want to take us through quickly? So, I mean, in the meantime, I see somebody else has joined you. Is that uh, one of the fellows? Yes, we have uh, Chris and uh, uh, Sadiq Panwar. These are our international fellows. Wonderful. I yeah. think um, I we went through all the various views. The question was which view would be the best one to know where the entry site for the CTO um, going through with the various uh, scenario, I think one normally could have been a caudal, if you see here. But even in the caudal view, uh, the diagonal uh, is uh, the upper, uh, the top vessel, and LED is at the bottom. You still cannot see exactly where would the origin of the CTO wa was. Same, there's an overlap here. Nothing in the cranial. So in the caudal um, was the best view pro to see where the entry for the CTO was. Again, same thing. This is a um, LED that is uh, actually after it starts, it go to the, it goes to the right side like a diagonal takeoff, and then you see a big septal coming off, and right there is where the I think the CTO um, starts. So uh, up to that point, I went with the fielder and just to see if uh, the fielder could find its way through always uh, if there is any kind of uh, micro channel there same thing many people would like to use fielder xt but uh, i changed to uh, miracle 6 uh, just to get into that bit is because this even if it is a timmy one flow and it's a uh, you know chronic uh, uh, occlusion sometimes uh, whether you you know people would like to use various wires but um, the i would like to go with miracle this is not a bad choice even to go with a pilot uh, uh, 150 wire um, at this uh, uh, juncture but uh, th this is where we are now the uh, we are still Can not clear want to go to some other view first okay for you go for further yeah let's go to that uh, AP cranial view because if it is the, if you have gone through the CTO and got to the uh, your main uh, uh, distal vessel then procedure definitely will become much much easier so you have already moved quite a bit let's take a picture here uh, the distal uh, there is a little bit of shadow so the I like the way the distal tip of the wire is moving yeah. uh, 
Looks, uh, looks take promising. A picture. I think we should take one picture. Wait one second. Okay. So, I mean, that's a support catheter or a balloon? That's a um, um, ga. Yeah. Okay. Kind of fine cross. Small, yeah, fine cross. Somewhere, somewhere in the mid portion, it kind of exits okay. out. It does yeah. start in the true. Yeah. Very, very hard to. And this is the miracle six. Yes. It looks like it went into the right direction. Right. And then then the it was, somewhere. No, it went. It was maybe a small septal there. We ACT was three ninety nine. So they stopped the angiomax for a few minutes. That was going to be my other question. Uh, Angiomax had been used here as yeah. the preferred agent. Right. Uh, anu, how, at what stage, uh, what made you choose here uh, Miracle 6 as opposed to Confianza? Mm, I mean, when you start at that point, I, we, I would just wanted to go to Miracle. Now, less, right little, now, if yeah. we still not, if I think we are not in the lumen, this is the time to change to Confianza. Okay. Clearly, the, if the long length the miracle will lose its uh, power, right? So that they just once ready to make a uh, penetrate the cap, then I think this is about the time. Yeah. Uh, good, uh, going to see this seems to be reasonable direction, and uh, you want to make a curve, curve. first. Yeah. Let yeah. me make the curve. Yeah. The so, qu question always is the same. You know, when would you go to this uh, specialty wire? And uh, I think more and more. Uh, it is that uh, you have a very low threshold to change to this wire quickly. Means you just start with any of the soft tip wire, whether it is fielder, fielder XT, uh, or pilot. This could be your initial wires. Samin, so, mean, wonderful and very helpful review of the left main cases. Uh, uh, important take home messages uh, with the location of the left main lesion and what may be the best long term strategy. In all the three trials you mentioned, Delta, Fine, as well as the Syntex five year registry, was there a further breakup and differentiation noticed with the diabetic and the non diabetics? Yes, the diabetic, as a general, general rule, do poorly. In with all the PCI, yeah, each yeah, each syntax tertial, whether it's a left main or multi vessel, you take a diabetic curve, you start separating even at two years uh, in favor of cabbage over PCI. But mind it again, I want to emphasize this is the, our first generation stand. So if we take uh, the data with the newer generation stand, uh, probably the gap may be uh, lower. And this is where because the one of the biggest was the the target vessel revascularization, which was almost 12 to 13 percent. And we know in these cases, uh, at present, with the, our newer generation uh, DES, the TLR is at one year is about 6 to 7 percent. So clearly, that 6 percent difference, which really made uh, p value superior in favor of the cabbage, could, could have been eliminated. And I felt that the Excel trial probably should have, uh, they should have duplicated the syntax with the Zions. But unfortunately, they didn't do it. And secondly, they stopped in the middle. So I don't know what uh, even outcome un unless it will show our non-inferiority. Because clearly, the Excel trial came with the two points. One, non-inferior and secondly, superior. But uh, as long as we become non-inferior in syntax score of 32 and below compared to cabbage, I think we'll be very happy. I'm sure this would be a fascinating conversation uh, with uh, Dr. Fuster as to how he would think this all uh, compares with the freedom. Yes, absolutely. And uh, clearly that, you know, the freedom, I would say that I probably, you know, the if knowing that the, what we learned in the syntax trial, there's a multi-vessel disease is more problematic than left main. So therefore, and knowing that the left main was excluded from freedom, uh, so I think that multi-vessel disease is still continues to get uh, coronary artery bypass surgery referrals, particularly diabetic or high syntax score and that is what we have been um, practicing and uh, this has actually had led to our increased cabbage volume and now we have a great star surgeon, Dr. P John Puskas has joined us from Atlanta, Emory. A lot and of hybrid procedures. Yeah, and he's a very big in the hybrid procedures and arterial revascularization. So that clearly will go long way to improve one, our referral and keeping the referrals at Mount Sinai uh, for the cabbage point of view and secondly, improve their outcomes. 
looking forward to conversing with him. Uh, Anu, going back to your CTO trial, uh, a little unusual that the number of retrograde procedures were about uh, 9 to 10 percent. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely less and they actually also found... That was not by design though. No, no, no not no, by design. Not by design. Because it was left to the operator to decide which is a preferred route. So in your, your personal experience today, what is the breakdown for the retrograde? But about 20 yes, percent. Yeah. Here also about 20 percent. Although last data which we saw that it has gone up to like 38 percent. But I think overall if you can succeed, integrate, integrate because clearly no matter what it is studies, every study of the retrograde has showed longer procedural time, higher fluoroscopy time, higher contrast use and relatively higher complication compared to integrate, uh, longer stent length. So clearly that if your choice is you want to try integrate, integrate twice, that's what been our teaching, fail, then you go to retrograde. And uh, this actually, the, they did try the string ray device uh, in this, uh, in this uh, study also, but that did not have much impact. Uh, but again, very small number of cases. I think 10 cases were done with the Stingray. 100% of the CTOs uh, within the trial at Mount Sinai were uh, transfemoral? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. And For our viewers, uh, info at cccliveCases.org. Uh, please send us your questions. Also, the Spanish webcast is on. Uh, just uh, click on the button at the bottom and uh, you can uh, choose a different language if you want. All right. Uh, and tell us where are no, we? No, no, I'm Looks just like trying to see. I think it's still subintimal. And uh, since the vessel is, uh, distal vessel is so small, somewhere here, trying to re-enter. You want to go back to the, your um, caudal view again? I don't know if caudal view is going to help. Okay, we could try the caudal view. At least that brought you into the uh, line alignment with the mid LED until the site of the total occlusion. Here it's going into the subtal area. Yeah. And too bad here you cannot have a choice yeah. the uh, the help from your contralateral because there was right. no absolutely no flow in the diagnostic uh, and the previous PCI time as well as today. There's no uh, backflow uh, the um, the retrograde collaterals. At any time when the wire rise, you saw the movement, yeah. that it tells you that it's a long so still, uh, length of the wire has gone subintimal. That it sticks, the wire sticks and you cannot take it, pull it out. Anu, what was the breakdown in your cases with the CTO trial? Uh, almost all the cases were six French? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but the, although no, no. Well, I mean, they didn't. For other for people, other. no, no. Seven French was like 15 percent of cases, but otherwise, all cases were done using a six French guide catheter. Excellent. Much higher proportion of uh, RCAs. Yeah, that was a little surprise. Yes. Have you noticed in your experience a slightly higher success rate with the right as opposed to the LED, or uh, doesn't really matter? It's a factor of so many other. Uh, uh, yeah. attributes I think um, the generically I would say the right definitely will have a little better slightly higher than yeah. LED yeah. Yeah. So, the, and the last being your circum uh, the circumflex I want to go to the caudal view and just try you want to go back to caudal view again yeah. okay okay we're going to go to the same view RAO 4 crane 4630s so, how many CTOs are you planning to show in your live cases symposium? Uh, well, actually, we uh, the, um, we have about um, uh, four already. Uh, with one of them, with the clearly with the retrograde technique, and uh, we still have to go through the regular process. That um, which one will be of educational value? So that process will, uh, you know, will same. We'll have a whole uh, about a series of eight, ten cases uh, CTOs, and then from there decide about four. Uh, three probably or uh, three will try to do on Thursday and one we keep it for um, uh, for Friday. So no longer is the CTO requirement in the United States a bilateral cannulation and a Japanese operator? No, 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 bilateral bilateral cannulation, yeah. no, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So bilateral yeah. stays, the Japanese yeah. operator right. is not, not required. Yeah, that's it. Oh. I can tell you our own tra track record 
of the retrograde when we started we wanted to learn it we brought all the i don't want to say the names but we brought uh, three different japanese uh, operators and uh, we have total Some 13 that? cases uh, of the 13 uh, the 10 of them failed retrograde one it is succeeded anti-grade these are the cases where we failed so we are talking about real real failure so they failed of the 13 10 they failed uh, one case they the succeeded anti-grade and one case succeeded retrograde the fourth case actually uh, was some issues with the guide catheter was not, not done so that we actually have the track record but that just one case uh, when we had a good we put our uh, um, the protocol in place understood the, all the steps and then we uh, went ahead and did our one live uh, successful retrograde case with the Japanese back in 2011 and the last year as you saw that uh, a standalone retrograde case was done by Anu uh, that was the first independent retrograde case in CCC symposium done last year look it's all fantastic but uh, I truly think uh, we, we need to be forever grateful to the Japanese for having had the faith and belief in the technology when it was being started and the thousands of physicians who have been trained by Japanese operators is, uh, is an absolute testament to that absolutely fully abs because they brought to this to the, this level because we have seen when going to Japan to various meetings and so that they will try the CTO eight times ten times 12 times, you name it. One day, two days, three days. Look, their their persistence has been amazing. Yes. And, uh, you know, plus the development of the wires uh, which they have created uh, has probably significantly boosted our success rates. Absolutely. So, two important uh, interventional meetings coming up in the next two weeks. Uh, yes. Euro PCR started yesterday and the sky around the corner. Absolutely. Yes. And you have been yeah. Which wire you need? Progress 200. Okay, Progress 200. No, don't take it out till you have the wire and make the curve. Ani, anu, no, no role here or any need for a guideliner, is there? Not at this time. Right. No. Okay. Not yet. The key is they need to get the wire into the distal lumen free, and that was um, really um, the one of the major in the CTO, a, uh, the expert CTO they had. And uh, that occurred now in 90 plus percent of cases. Ready? Put this in the wire. Okay. Good. Uh, anytime when you remove the wire uh, from your fine cross, make sure you put a little flush. Because what happens is over the time you have uh, the small blood clots inside the catheter, right. your wire movement becomes a little slow. So you don't need to inject. But when you are changing, that you have enough uh, uh, the saline. It coming and so that it's keep it just lubricated and many of them are hydrophilic wires anyway uh, so that it helps uh, movement of the wire also so I mean how much was the mean fluoro time in the CTO trial yeah fluoro time actually was about 36 minutes and so uh, while the procedure time was about 80 and 80, the volume of the dye yeah 250 250, 250. contrast volume was about 250 uh, tell us which wire you are used now and progress and you want to go to some other view now Let's see. Uh, now this is the Progress 200. It looks like taking a good curve. Let's take a picture and good. then we go to epicranium. No, good take a curve picture without here. PVC? Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah, we are in the lumen. Okay. Somewhere in the mid portion it does seem to be in the right. Good. And this one is the money shot. Will tell us where we are. You want to pull back your, well, you look like it's, everything is okay now. But you want to pull back your fine cross. We'll go a little low back. Good. As also, I noticed there a little more straighter uh, tip, uh, not too much curve on the tip, no, no, no. was we, it? Or? Uh, Just the a very tip small is the same. Curve. About the same. Okay. Good. Yeah. It does yeah. enter Grand somewhere right. Yeah. You yeah. was exchanged that Grand Slam. Yeah. So now there's clearly the distal wire is in a good position long segment which we knew and then we are going to dilate now uh, with the after exchanging there are various techniques what we say that once you cross with this stiff wire your first thing should be change it to a little floppier wire now our uh, scheme usually is we change it to an exchange length grand slam which gives you power as well as uh, uh, support uh, later on 
Now, if you cannot cross, you have various choices. You can use the uh, now the guide liner. You can use the um, uh, uh, not, yet, not, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. No. What I'm uh, once what you happen is suppose we cannot get your uh, fine cross. I think fine cross is at the distal uh, tip, and yeah. this is a time. If you are going to take it out, there are two ways, uh, depending on what wire you use to cross, whether you can use a dock or you can, in this uh, situation, you can use a dock because it is a, a serrated uh, distal tip or you can do the balloon anchor of the wire and take out the fine cross. Anu, what would you have uh, against uh, dilating there first before exchanging the wire? Yeah, I mean, well, it's except that yeah. this is the fine no, cross. This is fine cross. Yeah, but okay. you're right. If yeah. you have 1.5 balloon right. or 1.2, that's the right thing to do. Dilate a little bit because yeah, that will give help yourself your. more flow. Yeah. Let the yeah. exchange be easier. Yeah. Yeah. But this one will be okay now. Yeah. What's the status of the anticoagulation at the moment? Now we can restart. Yeah, because, you know, I know people believe that uh, ACT does not matter with the uh, bivalutin, but I can tell you, once you're ACT 4, 500, you start seeing these clouds, we stop it for a few which, minutes. Uh, which we saw when we were at that uh, septal, we saw that little, uh, what we call is a little cloud, which, you know, usually with uh, Angiomax, you don't have to worry, you just stop it a little, a little bit, and you see it, it has disappeared now. Excellent. And, and uh, this is one misnomer we have uh, in the CTO literature is that nobody uses Angiomax, but they all want to use heparin, thinking that uh, you can use heparin and give protamin if you have any perforation. But what we have done is all our CTO that in the last, so ever since we used, uh, used Angiomax, four years in Mount Sinai, every CTO has been done with the, uh, with the uh, Angiomax. And no issue even if you had any no wire. Yeah, wow. If you have wire perforation like you see, you might have seen that. I can show you the scene, a little cloud that we saw. Yeah. We saw the angiomax and right now you don't see that cloud anymore. Now, so this is one thing since the fine cross went through all the way in the distal vessel, you go with the 300 wire and then ch take the fine cross out. Now, if the fine cross has crossed, that's another uh, teaching point you have. You know a 2.5 balloon will go through that. You don't have to go to a 2.0 balloon now. Although we had 2.0 open. You have a 2.0 open. Yeah. open. Okay, then okay. you can use a 2.5 balloon to pre-dilate. Now, this is where the guideliner will come into use. That suppose your fine cross did not cross and now you took the fine cross with balloon the anchor. Means you bring your fine cross all the way into the guide, take a uh, deflated uh, balloon side by side in the guide which we have shown this technique before um, and uh, once you take out your fine cross and you have to go with the smallest balloon and this is those um, uh, uh, small balloons which is um, the mini truck balloon which comes at 1.26 millimeter 8 millimeter or 12, 12 millimeter you can keep any one of them um, so that's one and there is also and it's a monorail no? they are monorail yeah so those balloon you used to. Yep. We didn't talk about uh, what did you yeah. choose for the antiplatelet uh, regimen for this patient. The Plavix. patient is on uh, yeah, clopidogrel. Now more important, I think the, the teaching point of view here, put the patient's hand on the side, uh, that it has to be that what made you to decide to go with the progress wire. I think that's what we need to say, that you went with a fine cross, I mean fielder, then you went with a miracle six, where then confianza we understood. But what made you to go uh, to uh, progress, that knowing that the progress then kind of slipped through. Take a picture. Yeah, it like, looks like the progress wire slipped through. It's not. Look. Looks all right. Yeah. Now, uh, the what is a what is a progress uh, wire? Progress wire actually I is uh, the U U.S. technology, and if you see here, it is uh, the wire which I would say a combination of con uh, confianza as well as uh, the fielder. So it is polymer coated in the distal uh, 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 part of the, and then what happens is the distal tip is where you have a tapered uh, tip which you see and it goes almost up to 14 grams and it's also there is a hydrophilic coating. So the question. So when I, uh, if, if the confianza did not pierce through the cap, the question is which would be the next step? You could have gone with the confianza 12, this was a confianza 9 we used which did not do it and then was a confidence uh, there, there would have been confidence at 12 or you go to the main wire which was uh, the progress which we took a progress 200 with a distal tip of 14 grams that's when i thought to you know here's the but, distal tip let's just you go with the progress but are you not realizing that uh, you've got uh, 
less uh, doubts and you are using the progress fire uh, earlier in the cases? Distal, yeah. Yeah, no, I, th I think the point is we used to go distal. The, we used to go uh, with a various progress, now we can right. go only with one, right? Progress yeah. T2. Progress, 100. they start with uh, 40, 80, 120, 140 and uh, 200. We only keep uh, 200, 200, T. yeah. T. What do you want? No, oh, she, her, we're taking a cine. Yeah. Need to go a little distal, remember? A little massage. Artery need a little massage. Good. Low pressure. That's yeah. a 2 balloon? Yeah, this is the 2 or 20. Okay. Don't stand the entire length. No, we are not going to do it. Just a little balloon. But you need to open the outflow. because. But that's a... Remember the CTO went up to there with a little diffuse. This is a 4 atmosphere. And attached little verapamil there. What? Uh, you want a 2, 5, 38 promos? No, but that later. But let's... We are 2.530 balloon if you need. No, yeah, no, good. Yeah. Yeah. No. Samin, why the preference of rapamil there as opposed to nitro? No, I think just uh, because there will be a lot of um, microemplization. Yeah. No, what also happens yeah. is uh, CTO, uh, or most often you will see some uh, slow flow. Mm -hmm. Invariably, there is thrombus in this vessel. Yeah, and see this here that there is a little bit of uh, sluggish flow downstream. So just to Pump up the vessel a little bit. Nitro we always give, and uh, right? Yeah. We good. We take it out. You want I to take, take a picture? Decide on the strength length. Okay. You want to give a little bit of first? Okay. Wait. Then I have to take this. Out. No, that's fine. That's fine. Samin, how has been the individual uh, uh, response uh, as you are doing more uh, cases of orbital atherectomy as opposed to rotablator, particularly where you presented and you were you said you were moderating that case at ACC? Yeah. Yeah, that actually no. That uh, that time uh, uh, they there was none, uh, no case of the rotor done here or orbital. I did the orbital case. Now at Mount Sinai at present is a split about 40% orbital atherectomy and 60% rotablation of the uh, 50, 45 to 50 cases per month we do. Now question is where the split? I think two that's five, exactly. Right? Uh, yeah. Two five the, thirty eight. We right. start now. The question is the same. Is where do you start the stand? It, um, it's fairly clear in, in that this view, you can, uh, it's uh, fairly proximal. About yeah. five, 5 o'clock position. Yep, that's right. Let's get it. Yeah. And so uh, this uh, basically, that's a distal end. 2-5. Yeah. Two two five. Five so possibly 2-2 two, two, two or 3 long 38s. Yep. Now I think the oh, part of, two. yep, probably the two stands. Now but the, the, that's a very important point actually. As you saw this month, uh, Jack intervention, I have the, um, uh, the article, uh, the review article, the state of the art paper, the current status of rotation atherectomy, we go through it and of course we make our algorithm uh, basically uh, used in the calcific lesion, whether rotation atherectomy or uh, orbital atherectomy, but more importantly, which lesion will suitable for one versus other and what are the comparative data we are actually looking at it now. We have done 100 plus cases uh, of orbital atherectomy. Uh, and uh, in last uh, you know five six months with a 30 day follow up and compare the, during the same similar uh, the, uh, same time uh, compare with the rotational atherectomy and try to see which lesions and so one thing for sure our orbital atherectomy cause less slow flow that's plus plus point but it does cause more wire bias and obviously so because the wire is 0 0.012 very stiff wire so it will cause more wire bias so they have to be careful and that's where the people have some trouble in uh, dissections and perforations when using the orbital atherectomy in those cases yet with the far greater Ready? ease of use no that that's absolutely now clearly this will be for the centers which are not used to use a rotation atherectomy i mean at a here sinai is a little different here, like, uh, you know, if we don't do a rota, nurses actually and fellows tell me, why are we not doing rota? Uh, why compared to other centers, it's a big deal. Go. Look, I have always attributed your higher success rate to a to, uh, larger use of uh, uh, atherectomy devices, yep. uh, particularly, you know, rotational atherectomy, and it's the confidence level which I have watched here, which I think makes an enormous amount of difference. Uh, so many cases I have uh, seen uh, you and Anu perform, which would uh, clearly be, you know, people would shy away and uh, not do a good uh, lesion preparation. Down. And I think that's a very very important point uh, as you mentioned key is overall rotation atherectomy in the country of the 800 plus thousand PCI is done in 1.8 to 1.9 percent of cases means less than 2 percent 
which you could do it here. Okay. Now then, you say why they are, while the heavily calcific lesions are present in about 8 to 9 percent of cases. This gap. Probably even more, no? Yeah, well, I mean, you're right. Moderate to severe could be up to 30 percent. But if you take a purely, we looked into our data, heavy calcium, tram track, those undergoing PCI, because many of them go for cabbage, but those getting PCI at Mount Sinai is about 9 percent. So if and that is exactly our PC, the rotablation uses 9%. You take last 5 years, 9% every year, 40, 40, 450 cases of the 5,000 coronary intervention. I, I must very quickly qualify it here, Samin, that uh, people may have had a feeling uh, because of the cases which we select are far more heavily calcified that it may appear that the, your use of rotablator is higher. Yeah. But as you pointed out, those 9 to 10% is the over all incidents which I think is uh, is exactly right and patients are being referred to Sinai just for this purpose and therefore if use of orbital arthrectomy or introduction of orbital arthrectomy will close this gap of 2% to 9% to me I think it's a great service to our patients what about uh, the cost of the device uh, is is that an issue that I think they all will come down I mean there's no question about it uh, unless you get an increased reimbursement or payment uh, the device cost has to come down in this day and age uh, because uh, the hospitals are losing their shirt with the two midnight rules the many programs are being closed because all the uh, one of the big uh, uh, if uh, you know issue used to be that uh, justify your um, inpatient admissions now no longer issue because only the two midnight which happens only patient with acute MI uh, or I mean the STEMI non STEMI or if you have created a complication which is a very small percent of cases so this is a very big Come issue down. which we are facing at this time Go up, huh? uh, looks like you'll need a third stent too maybe yeah, yeah we'll do a little balloon there and then see this the is third. Uh, still a 2.5 yeah this it's two a 27538 seven seven okay that makes more sense yeah down up again. You want to go 2 millimeter in? Go up there. We have to go to caudal picture and then we make a decision if we need a third stent or not. Yeah. You might have covered that uh, the CTO area completely yeah. and the moderate left main and the moderate diagonal since it, we are not getting up to the bifurcation could be left alone. Go uh, tell the patient to keep the hand on the side please. Yeah, for some reason he's always putting his hand on the chest. Patient pointing out where to, we need to dilate. Yes. Very educated patient. Patient guided PCI. Yep. Patient guided PCI. Go up again. Looking excellent. The yep. distal and the mid portion is fine. One. We yes. need to know the proximal now. All the branches are excellent. good. Yes, excellent job. And that is the advantage of this newer generation stands that they keep the branches. Um, no, no, it's well, important. It means even uh, it's conf that we didn't conformability go. to the vessel is so perfect. Yeah, and that is also less uh, subintimal dissection, and that is why the retrograde have more side branch closures and uh, more CK release is because you have more extensive dissection. Now we are in the caudal view, and now let's go. The other thing also, we have the one the, uh, disadvantage of uh, the, you know, this wire, you know, the stiff wire is that it could cause a lot of uh, wire bias and spasm. No, but I think it's clearly a lesion there. 318 yeah, probably need another 18 or 20. 320. 320, just after the bifurcation. So, yeah. we'll leave the diagonal. Uh, for the time being, this once you open this major okay, LED, this, this is, is such a beautiful view yeah. to Grand Slam. No, I'm put a run you it will change. No, go with the run through here. Go with the run through wire side by it. side. Yeah. Yeah, you already opened it. Yeah. On the other hand, the the wire is looking in a good position, yep. straight yes, forward. Yes. Uh, yeah, but this is a beautiful view and uh, excellent result so far. A few quick. Uh, Housekeeping matters, uh, please uh, continue to join us for the peripheral interventions, uh, uh, live cases and uh, uh, Samin, how is this, uh, The there is this other uh, hot talk uh, going on? Yeah, that is what we did is, I sponsor now 
under my father's, uh, you know, I sponsor the visiting professor at Mount Sinai right. uh, series, and we started again the mission being education, education. So our visiting professor of the month, which uh, we call like yesterday, last uh, yesterday was Dr. Barry Kohler. Mm -hmm. uh, all uh, you know uh, on various subjects, they are you know invited, uh, and uh, the. Not necessarily, not necessarily interventional cardiology? No, nope, not necessarily interventional cardiology. It's more actually general cardiology uh, than intervention. And uh, we keep, uh, the, now we started live webcasting that controversy of cardiology. And that's a phenomenal one and a half hours, uh, once a month, usually third uh, Monday of the month. Dr. Fuster do, uh, does the moderation, sometimes he asks us to do, like yesterday he asked uh, um, <coughs> my colleague David Warsheimer uh, two months ago, uh, what happened here, yeah. you want to take the wire, push it out a little bit and always have to be careful when you remove your device and, uh, with the air and so, uh, because many times issues could happen, there is some air in the trapped in the system. Mm -hmm. Wait what you can do, Let's disconnect here, go forward, okay. keep going forward. No. Yeah. Increase the flush. Yeah. You go also forward mild. from here. Inject. Oh, okay. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, One second. You took air. Okay. Go. Go forward. Good. That's good. Okay. Just one more second. Flush this. Uh, your left. A line. A line. Good. Yeah. Has to be good. very very careful. Good. Okay. Now what do you need to do? You want to take a picture? You want to put a stand now? Let's take a picture now. We uh, took out that um, Grand Slam wire. We changed it to our uh, workhorse uh, run through. Gave a lot of vasodilators. And let's see whether the proximal area is plumped up. Otherwise, we have to stent it. No, I think the, based on this, we should stent it anyway. Good. Take a picture. Yeah, not much doubt piece. that you yeah. need to. Yep. Yeah. Go. Right. Diag also leave it for yeah, now. No, live, leave it the diag we leave it. Yeah. Since three stents, um, uh, because you know, I want to avoid putting multiple, so three are good. Uh, we've taken care of the complex disease LED. The diagonal lesions in there. There's some RCA lesions. I think it will be reasonable in this case. Uh, do a stress uh, MPI again in three months and right. see where you are. And uh, if patient is still ischemic, then you bring him back uh, for complete revascularization. If patient is non-ischemic uh, on your medical therapy and this revascularization, probably nothing more need to be done. Okay, some die. Good. Good. Ready? Yeah. Okay. And this is a 3 o yeah. You can go 2 millimeter. In. It's a 3 o 20 uh, Promus Premier. Now, one of the clear advantages of the Promus Premier basically is that foreshortening, which was very calm or was reported, I would say, although we did, we did have rare cases uh, uh, with the earlier generation uh, Promus uh, Element and uh, uh, Stance and Element Plus, and so there was a Promus Premier because Sometimes. in the proximal segment, so adding the that additional. Uh, and the link. The uh, interesting question I have for you, Samin, is yeah. who's distributing your premier stent here? Uh, the medicines company or uh, no, Boston? Or Boston? But actually, both. They both want to be here. But Excellent. truly, it's a Boston scientific yes. uh, uh, endeavor. Rape. Yeah. Yes. And the but stent right. is doing the, very well. Because with their relationship, uh, really has gone to. Uh, the both are co-marketing. We've yeah. given a lot of a psychotherapy to the distal vessel. Yeah. It's plumped up, ready for the final yeah. shot. Two final shots. Yes. Excellent. And one Is more is Daniel. So, uh, three O tapering down to uh, two five. Yes, three O to two point seven five and two point five. Right. Wow. Beautiful result. That's fantastic with all the branches. Absolutely and outstanding. Good. Now we can just complete it because we are reaching to our time. Uh, the take home message that the expert CTO trial and status of unprotected left main PCI, that contemporary trial of CTO recanalization has shown to have success rate over 90% with very low complication rate and one year MACE rate of less than 10% with the Zion's everlumous eluting stent including 1% stent thrombosis and 6% TVR. Then recent trials of unprotected left main PCI involving osteal or shaft lesions 
has shown long term outcomes similar to the cabbage cohort and PCI is a viable option in osteal shaft unprotected left main lesion with non extensive concomitant other vessel disease so this leads to our three questions one following are the false statement regarding expert CTO trial BS is superior to BMS crossing with mini track balloon was achieved in 95% of cases successful guide wire crossing occurred in 90% of cases one year mace rate was 20% A and D so which is the false second the following are the false conclusion of a five year follow up of the syntax trial the syntax score predicted Mackey in left main cohort in each tertial Mackey outcomes were similar in left main versus three vessel CAD cohort a left main cohort had higher death rate incidence of CVA was similar in PCI versus cabbage group and all of the above so these are the uh, two questions uh, which we have and the last question is that in the delta registry of the osteal shaft unprotected left main lesions have similar outcomes to cabbage except death rate TVR mace Mackey and MI Anu, okay. take home message from you. What are uh, the learning tips uh, you would like people to, to recollect from this case? Um, I think uh, the, uh, one interesting point in this case compared to any other CTO was, um, you know, which view would you use uh, uh, when you are doing CTO is that's very important that uh, once you've done your angiogram, just review your, your angiogram for a few minutes and understand uh, which I think uh, which I went over that AP cranial we could see the distal LED, we could not see the true entry site of the CTO, same with the RAO caudal, we could not see the uh, entry site for the CTO. The only uh, view that really showed where to enter uh, the CTO was this caudal, uh, the, final, the caudal shot. And once the same thing is going through the various uh, wire strategies, you don't have to have uh, all the CTO wires uh, in your lab. You just have to familiarize yourself that you start with a um, uh, you know, glide coated soft tip wire, whether it is a fielder uh, whether or a fielder XT or even if you are uh, used to whisper any of this wire. So you go up to the CTO site with your uh, uh, you know, soft tip wire and once you go there and here there was the key, what if you see there in the caudal view, you see the septal that's coming down but LED was uh, at about 11. Uh, 11 o'clock position that's where your entry had to be so uh, even with the soft tip wire many times soft tip wire will find uh, the channel and go, go through in which case picture. you don't have to go picture. through uh, you know the aggressive wires but uh, the fielder just would not um, you know get into the CTO entry site at that time you change to your next wire and same thing you don't have to be trying one wire for 10 minutes 15 minutes close. couple of minutes and um, you change your uh, wire strategy and the next strategy will be the same uh, you can go with a miracle uh, you know the various miracles miracle 3 miracle 6 miracle 9 you could keep any one of them uh, we only have a we keep miracle 6 and that's where we tried miracle 6 and that's how i could enter into the led with the miracle and the uh, same thing it was subintimal now that has happened how do you pierce the subintimal uh, uh, cap and go to the true lumen and uh, this is where your confianza would help uh, you don't have confianza pro is which has the hydrophilic coating at the tip and it's a tapered tip so the confianza 9 did not do it uh, you saw that we tried a couple of uh, minutes and immediately you change and that's where you could have made a decision do I go to confidence at 12 or do you go to the more aggressive one which is uh, the progress because the progress 200 uh, is tapered tip it's a combination of um, you know fielder and uh, confidence so that with the 14 gram tip we were able to pierce and get into the true lumen so I could just uh, tell you that um, you know how you uh, you know go to the CTO wire pro escalation that uh, very simple have your three wires and you decide uh, which wire that you're going to work with keep them with you and just familiarize with these wires and uh, keep doing the same thing in every case um, and you'll be able to succeed all right thank you
Anu, great, uh, great uh, skills, uh, excellent instructions. In addition, I, I absolutely uh, agree with your uh, excellent judgment about uh, not necessarily going with the bilateral cannulation, which in this case I think would have only made the case harder. Uh, Samin, uh, you have a collection of your uh, fellows. You'd like to introduce them? Yep. Uh, I, we have uh, Chris Vargis. He's actually the chief fellow. Uh, he's a graduate of uh, Mount Sinai and then he stayed over uh, to do the interventional fellowship. He's finishing here and he'll uh, stay uh, joining a private group and stay as a faculty in uh, Mount Sinai. And then we have uh, Sadik Panwar who actually has done one year uh, interventional research uh, and his main focus has been in bifurcation uh, as well as uh, OCT. He's working on that uh, project. Um, we will uh, have uh, some data to uh, show uh, soon and he'll be the interventional fellow starting uh, in a month. All right. Excellent, Samin. Congratulations again for an excellent case. Uh, we'll see you back uh, next time, session number 60 on June the 17th.